Welcome to the Blessings of Jesus. In today's message, Comfort for Mourners, Dr. McLuhan teaches how we can experience God's comfort when we are grieved by the consequences of sin. Last week, we launched the new year with a message, series of messages called The Blessings of Jesus. We learned that Jesus began his teaching ministry with seven blessings that offer solutions to what the Ten Commandments were not able to provide. The law was designed to help us understand our sin and how sinful we are. Jesus began his ministry by saying, repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. At first, Jesus healed people to demonstrate the power of God that was on him. And after he preached that message that God gave him to deliver, he began by saying, blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Matthew chapter 5 and verse 3. Jesus said that salvation is not found by trying to keep laws and doing all the good things that we can. Salvation is found in recognizing our own spiritual emptiness. He called it spiritual poverty, your poverty of spirit. Turn to Jesus for salvation because he can do what nobody else can do for us. When we realize there's nothing that we can do, no gift that we can bring, no good deed that we can do, just turn to God for salvation. Then we are ready for him to act on our behalf and save us for all of eternity. Jesus kept saying to the people who had been longing for years, all the yearning of the Old Testament, when will the kingdom of heaven arrive? Jesus showed up in Galilee on that mount to say, it is here, you are in the kingdom right now. Jesus said the wait is over for those who repent the kingdom is, present tense, yours. Isn't that a wonderful expression? And when we ask Jesus to take our broken spirit, the wait is over and we are in the kingdom. Of course, it's here and of course, it will be more in the future. But right now, we are experiencing, as Jesus would later pray, heaven on earth, your kingdom come and your will be done in our individual lives. The gospel is good news. And Jesus came to proclaim that good news to us. While the religious people of the day did not like this message at all, uh, but the people whose lives were broken were tremendously encouraged. Oh, thank you, Jesus, for bringing good news into our lives. People are doing all the things that their religion asked them to do, but they are blinded to the simple message of Jesus be poor in spirit, and yours is, yours will be, yours is now, the kingdom of heaven. Jesus said, bring me your brokenness, and I will forgive your sins and heal all of your diseases. Now, the greater my awareness is that I cannot save myself, the more I'm able to experience the blessings of the kingdom of God in my daily life. If you missed last week's message, we invite you to visit my YouTube channel, Dr. Peter McLuhan, and hear the first amazing blessing, or the message on the first amazing blessing that Jesus offered to the people. Now, the first key to understanding the blessings of Jesus is that they build on each other. They are not random, seven random sayings of blessings, but there is a specific order to them, a specific meaning they are in an ascending order that is important for us to grasp as we move along. The second key to understanding the keys to the blessings of Jesus is that the blessings of Jesus are offered, that he is offered are qualities that we want to have in our lives more and more. We want these characteristics, these qualities to be in our life. And so it is important that we really understand that they, what they are. And nothing is more important than understanding the second blessing that Jesus pronounced. No one would want to feel blessed with something they didn't want to have. God gave you something you didn't want. You'd say, well, how, how is that a blessing to me? And so this is what we need to understand means that we have to understand exactly what these qualities are and why we should eagerly seek them. And so it's especially important, as I've said already, 
that we understand the second blessing of Jesus. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Matthew chapter 5 and verse 4. Maybe you're saying, well, well, Pastor, I I don't want more mourning in my life. So immediately we we need to know that Jesus is not talking about people who have lost loved ones. Jesus is not saying that it is a blessing when you lose someone, especially that you love. As a pastor, I've walked through families in mourning that I would not wish upon anyone. We, We are thankful for God's presence and God's comfort, but this is not the kind of mourning that Jesus is talking about. Funerals are difficult, but even in those most difficult moments, the presence of God can be felt and experienced. Jesus is a wonderful counselor to those who walk through these shadows of the valley of death. Every day people write to me about human suffering. They write about natural disasters. They write about food shortages. It's so hard, Pastor Margaret, and I take it very personally. I have no food in my house. Pastor, please send me something. Every day we hear stories like this. We hear stories of persecution. We don't need to wait for the evening news to tell us there was an earthquake on the other side of the world. Uh, Things begin to shake and people write to me and say, we're having an earthquake right now. Jesus has deep compassion for the things that cause people sorrow in their lives. So what does it mean? What is the blessing when Jesus said, blessed are those who mourn? Now, last week we looked at four or five various translations of the first blessing so that we could get a deeper understanding of that blessing. And that's what we need today. And I want to turn us to the Amplified Bible I don't know how many of you have an Amplified Bible. It's a wonderful Bible to have. If you just take your time, uh, it's, uh, it's wordy and lengthy, but it adds layers of meaning to various verses. And so here it is from the Amplified Bible. Blessed, forgiven, refreshed by God's grace are those who mourn over their sins and repent, for they will be comforted when the burden of sin is lifted, amplified Matthew chapter 5 and verse 4. Doesn't that add a whole new dimension to what we have just heard and what Jesus wants us to understand? The Amplified Bible opens our eyes to see that Jesus is talking about people who have understood the seriousness of their sin and grieving for what they have done. Have you ever come to the point where you just are so broken over decisions and courses of your life and actions that you have taken and wished you could have one or another thing back? This is beginning to understand what this blessing is all about when we understand how much we needed Jesus in our life and he is able to forgive us. The second blessing builds on the foundation of the first blessing. Now you can see why. We are blessed when we realize that we cannot save ourselves, and we are blessed when we realize how great the price is that Jesus paid to forgive us for our sins. Uh, Several years ago, I had an open vision of Jesus on the cross. I saw him as though I were looking at a photograph of what crucifixion would have been like in Roman times. I just lay very still in the bed as I had this vision. And as I kept watching and looking, the picture came to life. Jesus looked up. I just jolted in the bed. I was so stunned by what was happening in front of me. He looked up and he made direct eye contact with me. I expected to feel terror and as we looked, began to, his eyes began to meet my eyes. I thought I would, shame would overtake me and I would run out of the room and just try to get away from that encounter. That there was something in his eyes that removed shame. I mourned that my sin crucified him, but I was comforted by the love that I could see in his eyes that he had for me. Blessed are those who mourn for they shall be comforted, Matthew chapter 5 and verse 4. May you receive the comfort of the Holy Spirit today and the blessing of God the Father come upon you. We mourn over our sins. When we do that, we open the door to receive blessings 
from the divine. We open the door to receive divine comfort. And perhaps as you have been listening to this message and you feel sorry for your sin and the sorrow has come upon you that you have never felt before, it could be that Jesus has just appeared to you. He might be before you right now. Receive him as your savior and ask him to forgive you for all of your sins and receive the comfort and love that he is extending to you right now. Now, what, what happens when we don't understand this beatitude or this blessing, when we turn away from it? Uh, well, uh, when we reject this understanding, this blessing, then we try harder to earn God's approval. We do it by trying more good deeds and more good works to somehow earn God's favor. And this leads to more self-effort and to more pride. And pride keeps us from experiencing the joy and presence of God in our lives. Without understanding this blessing, we can blindly continue to hurt other people, especially people in our own family. Worse, it hardens our heart towards God and weakens our ability to hear the voice of the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit is always there to comfort the contrite, the broken of hearted, and those who are leaning upon Jesus for more and more understanding. In this blessing, Jesus is not just asking us to mourn for our own sin, but to mourn for the consequences of sin in the world, for the consequences that other people are suffering because there is sin in the world. Human suffering in the world is immense. I don't need to say that to you. You know how much people around the world suffer. Bob Pierce was the founder of both World Vision and the Samaritan's Purse. And these two organizations have helped relieve suffering around the world. Millions of people, regardless of their religion, have received the benefit, support, food, aid, times of disaster. Both of these organizations have poured out into the lives of people the blessing that Jesus wants people to have, the comfort that people, that Jesus wants people to have. Many of our international par partners have worked with these two organizations or have received humanitarian help by these organizations in time of disaster. I have preached in churches that have been built by World Vision in places like Burkina Faso and other poor countries around the world. What a joy it is to be involved in the process of relieving human suffering as we go around the world and as we touch people's lives. Uh, several years before becoming your pastor, I don't know if I've ever said this from the pulpit, I flew to California to interview with World Vision, hoping to become one of the regional directors here in, in the U.S. I was disappointed when they said I was not, didn't feel that I was the right fit for their organization and came home a little bit dejected. Before I left California, I had an opportunity to visit my, uh, my paternal grandmother. I'd only met Grandmother McLuhan maybe five times in the course of my life because of living overseas. She was a godly woman. She prayed her children into the mission field, especially my father. And I cherished the words that grandmother Helen said to me, she said, don't worry, Peter, God has something better for you. And she put a very small gift in my hand. It was a token of what God would eventually lead me to become your pastor. And she was right. Who could have ever known down the road but God that our messages right now are being heard in 185 countries. God is so amazing. He knows where to do, what to do. He knows where you and I need to be. He knows how to move us when our hearts are open and tender towards him to go to the places that he has called us to go and to do the things that he has called us to do. After Bob Pierce died, a note was found in his Bible. I always like to see people's Bible when I take a funeral. And I can go through there and just, just pick up ideas about their spirit and their walk with Jesus. Uh, here's a note that was in Bob Pierce's Bible. It's become quite famous. Break my heart, he wrote, for the things that break the heart of God. And as our heart becomes tender towards the things that break the heart of God, we become more and more available to be used by him in ways that we never could have imagined. Jesus wants us to mourn 
for the consequences that sin has brought into the world. He wants us to see and to feel what he sees and feels for people. Uh, somebody wrote, the heart cannot feel what the eye does not see. And so often we turn a blind eye and say, I didn't see that. We say it mentally. Sometimes you actually say it out loud, but you know exactly what I'm talking about. We don't want to know because we don't want to be responsible for doing something about that tragedy that we have just saw. Jesus does not turn his eye away from you or away from me. Over and over, we read in the scripture, Jesus acted on behalf of the needs he saw in the lives of people. Uh, if you just, just go compassion and saw, you just find a whole list of scriptures that will fall out to challenge you and other people, not just Jesus, who saw needs and who reacted to it. Here's one, Matthew chapter 14 and verse 14. When he went ashore, he saw a great crowd and he had compassion on them and he healed the sick. This would eventually lead to the feeding of the 5,000 and there's so much focus upon the 5,000 but I like to call what he saw the miracle before the meal and the reason people stayed late is because they were being healed and who cares about food when your children are being healed? Who cares about food when your grandchildren are being healed? Who cares when people that you love are being healed? And the disciples said, send them away. And the people are saying, keep going, keep healing, keep touching my family, Jesus saw. And those he healed were far more important than those he fed. That was just the after blessing of the real miracle because Jesus saw, he felt, and he healed. And God wants us to see, to feel, and to heal as we see the needs of people over and over again, we read that Jesus saw and then he healed. I pray that Jesus gives us eyes to see and faith to believe that we can do what Jesus did. He healed people and he comforted them. And when we pray for people, they are healed. I feel it. I feel it so deeply. I feel joy but I also feel compassion. I feel a connection. I did what Jesus would have done. I did what Jesus did in this situation. I feel the heart of God for people Amen. when they ask me for prayer. I prayed for a lady in the Philippines this week, and she was telling me about the pain that she was in, and we had several exchanges, and she said, I'm in pain. I just need to go to bed right now. I said, bless you. Obviously, if I'm writing at night, it's really early in the morning on the other side of the world. And the next morning, she says, I woke up and I feel so much better. You know what it did to my heart? Something inside of me just began to elevate, to feel the presence and the blessing of God. So Matthew records, when Jesus saw the crowd, he had compassion on them because they were harassed, helpless, like sheep without a shepherd, Matthew chapter 9 and verse 36. Boy, have you ever felt that way? Just at your wit's end on what to do. You feel harassed by the society. You feel helpless in the system. And you feel like a sheep without a shepherd. Hope you don't feel that way because of a lack of having a pastor. But sometimes people feel this way when they're not connected with a caring group of people. Well, uh, tomorrow is... January 15th here in America, and it's the day that we celebrate the life and legacy of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. We'll celebrate all that his life stood for uh, tomorrow. He is the one who saw the need of people. He is one who saw the need of people. He, he mourned the condition of people, and he was, he was able to move the nation to see what God sees and make a shift in our culture. May God help us as we mourn over sin to create a shift in the environment in which God has placed us. May God give us eyes to see the real needs of people and do something that brings social change in people's lives. People who don't see often try to kill the messenger who does see. They kill Jesus, and we know from history Religious leaders killed Jesus. They were the mastermind behind his crucifixion. And we know that people whose eyes were, were, were blinded by the condition of people in our, 
in our very own nation wanted to silence the voice of Martin Luther King, and so they did, but they could not stop his cause. It is a righteous cause. It is the cause that we are to pick up and to take up. The good news is that Isaiah or Zechariah the prophet prophesied a day that a day would come when Israel would mourn for the one whom they had pierced. And this, of course, is a reference to the crucifixion of Jesus. Not only will Israel regret what they did for not recognizing the Messiah, all the people of the world will understood who Jesus is and what he did on the cross. Zechariah went on to read these, uh, to write these great words. On that day, a fountain will open in the house of David and in the inhabitants of Jerusalem to cleanse them from sin and from impurity. Zechariah chapter 13, verse 1. Zechariah prophesied that Arabs and Jews and Gentiles will come to the fountain of, salva of salvation. We invite you today to come to the fountain of salvation. Are you ready to leave religion and to receive Jesus as your savior? Ask Jesus to forgive you of your sins and make you his child. Come Holy Spirit, fill people who are praying with me right now. If you just prayed with me to receive Jesus as your savior, tell me about your decision to follow Jesus. Next week, we'll continue studying the blessings of Jesus. Father, help us to see suffering in the world as you do and to have your compassion and mercy. Use us this week to bring your healing and comfort to others. In Jesus' name, amen. We hope this message has filled you with living hope in Jesus. If you would like to talk to someone about your spiritual journey, please leave a comment or send us a private message. We enjoy reading your notes and having an opportunity to pray with you. If you received a blessing through this message, please share it with others. We invite you to become a Living Hope Partner by donating as little as a dollar a month through our QR code. Your gifts will help us create new messages and reach more people. Living Hope is a ministry of Ingleside International Incorporated. All donations for Living Hope qualify as a charitable contribution. Thank you for your prayers and support. Next week, we will continue learning together from the Word of God. God bless you and fill you with living hope.